Hey there, Echo Diesel fans. Um, today, I'm working on a whole bunch of stuff. Um, truck's all taken apart. Uh, I was having issues with my DPF, which uh, you can see I've already removed it. There's the turbo, uh, turbo elbow there. DPF's already removed. It was giving me, uh, it was doing regens, uh, you know, telling me to keep driving, which is kind of telling you that something's not quite right. And uh, you know, after it finished the regen the very next day, it said the DPF is 100% full uh, seed dealer. So at that point, I realized I needed to address it. The truck's got 220,000 miles, and I thought, you know, while I, I'm in here dropping the DPF, might as well drop the transmission because my um, transfer case was leaking a little bit. I think my my yoke is uh, shot. I replaced the seal, and, and you can see there's some damage on there. I think it's just leaking because because the yoke needs to be replaced. That's that's on order. Um, I've already replaced those guys, but uh, yeah, so that's the yoke's getting replaced. I'm gonna drop the tranny and replace that rear main because that started leaking real bad. You know, it started out light and, and got progressively worse. I just came back from a couple of long road trips and um, you know, the truck really did me a solid. It broke down after I got home on the way to get to the gas station to fill it up. It could have really left me stranded in a number of inconvenient places, but um, you know she's she, she's been taking care of me, so it's time to return the favor. I'm gonna do a lot of other things here, like replace these uh, bellows. Uh, one's already blown up. Replace all the brake pads and uh, rotors. Do the lower ball joint and bearing, because I've already done the other side. You know, just a bunch of maintenance. Um, replace that rear main and reluctor wheel, and probably the, the crankshaft sensor but I wanted to talk a little bit about this DPF the the DPF really have two choices on I can either get a new one they're about 1200 bucks at the dealer um, or I could try and clean this myself so this is a combo unit DPF somewhere on here it's stamped DOC DPF which means that uh, the front parts the, the DOC the diesel oxidative catalyst it's basically like uh, the cat you have in your gas car it uh, converts unburned fuel or carbon monoxide into co2 and uh, the back side is the dpf that's that's where your your soot and uh, gets you know converted into ash so um when i shined the light in here i was expecting to see a bunch of soot not the light the camera i was expecting to see a bunch of soot in here but to my surprise this actually looks pretty decent you know that's that's the um that's the catalyst there and um, when I shine the camera in here this is the differential pressure port I think you see there's not too much soap build up there either so I'm hoping it's just full of ash and it's at the end of its life cycle in any case I've always wanted to do this and uh, to, to see what you know how cleaning it works so my plan is to cut this thing apart because I don't want the chemicals I'm going to use on the DPF to potentially harm the the DOC so I'm going to very carefully uh, use a rubber band to make a line and then cut along that line to separate these two and separate the back here so that I can get at this with uh, chemicals and, and water clean it out sequester the the solution and uh, dispose of it properly but before I do that I wanted to get a reading get a baseline of where we are how much how clogged is this so my uh, simple solution here is to make a little manometer uh, this is just a you know a, a length of clear hose clear uh, this hose is from an old sea dew that I've had for years um, so I filled it with water and I'm going to put a vacuum on this end using a funnel and a shop vac um, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be uh, a vacuum, a light vacuum generated in here, and it will move the water up the column. So I've actually already done this, and there's my my dirty line. So the water rose up to that point. Now, when I clean this, I'm expecting this to breathe more freely, in terms of reducing the vacuum in here, and I should see the water column somewhere in between. We'll see. I'm not sure how you know how much ash is going to come out of here, or maybe this thing's not as clogged up as I think it is. Maybe I have another problem, like, um, uh, I don't know, a differential pressure sensor or something. Uh, but, you know, since this thing had to come down anyway for the rear main, I thought, why not 
why not do this? You know, 220,000 miles is kind of a lot for these things. I've heard of failing a lot sooner. Uh, and I've always, you know, I've got the welding equipment and I've always wanted to see inside and see how much uh, stuff it collects over this sort of duration. So uh, let's see what happens when we, when we do this uh, little test here. <laughs> That's how that works. Um, we'll see what happens after I cut it up and clean it. Stay tuned for part two.